first thing you do we need to do is to install the executable file so you can install the compiler on Windows. Coming, I'm going here to the, I believe is the project file here. You can also find that in different pages, there's a 64 bit version, which there's, it's buggy. The installer is buggy. It, it probably will be fixed soon, but for now, let's just use the traditional bin in GW version for Windows. So let's download the executable file here. Once you go to page here, it automatically downloads. It downloads to your download files if you're on standard Windows, if you didn't change your configurations. So just click here so you can run the executable files. Here's the information about the license and all of that. Let's click install here. This is the installation director directory where your files are going to be, the executable files, the bin and all of that. Put it here. Okay. Now here the installation manager takes you to this page here and it's in this page here which you're going to choose the languages you want. So we want the developer toolkit bin. We want the main 32 base here. Add a compiler, the ADA compiler, we don't need that. We need the Fortran compiler. We want the C++ compiler. I believe the Standard C compiler is already included there, but let's put the Objective C compiler here just for the sake of it. Now let's go ahead and put the ADA here. Check this language later on. Okay. So once you mark that for installation, you can update the catalog here. Let's apply the changes. And now it's going to download the all the compiler. So once it's it's downloaded and installed, see something like that. A few issues here, but not be a problem when we we're using the compiler. So let's close this here. Doing a, an update of the packages here, install. Close this here. Now everything should be installed. Once everything is installed, you need to check to see if the compilers are installed, either by use by logging into your PowerShell or you, on your command prompt into Windows. You can just type the Windows key here. Just write prompt, command prompt, or PowerShell. Either way, it should. So let's try to call here the C compiler, GCC. So it's saying that it's not recognized. This is because we haven't set yet the environmental variables or in other words Windows doesn't know how to find out where the compilers are so let's try to find out where those compilers are installed or where the main GW is installed on our computer so we can, can direct Windows to the path let's go here to the file explorer go to our computer here and here you have a folder with the main, main GW. Click here. Here in Beam, you should have your compilers here. Okay, so this should be the path that you need to add to Windows environmental variables. So you can run your programs and compile your code. But first, let's just try to test this. Let's just go to the main 
file and see if the com the if we can access the compilers from there. So I'm just gonna do some things here in the terminal. Let's go to change directory. First, let's list all the direct directories that are under the C directory. Oh, sorry. This does the ls command only works on the Power Shell on, or on Linux. So let's call it dir here. So this is min. Let's change directory to min. Dot. Let's list again whatever is inside here. Change directory to bin. This here. So probably the compilers are the path to the compilers is the path to this file. So let's check to see if GCC is here. So you see, GCC is here. S G plus plus is here, which is the compiler for uh, C plus plus and G Fortran, which is the command for the compiler for uh, Fortran. So they're all here. You can technically you can run your code, but just by saving your scripts here and executing executing them from here. But that's not what we want to do. We want to set the environmental variables so you don't have to do that every time. So let's do this. Let's search for path here. So you're going to go to this edit system environmental variables. Um, environment variables path. So I came here to the I came here to the environmental variables and uh, came to environmental variables and all I need to do is here on path you don't actually need to start, start uh, to put it here on the system variables you just need to come here to the path and then you come you put the path to the min gw bin folder here I put an extra slash here just for precaution so this is all you need to do you need to set your path here on the user variables for this is the name of my computer so you give ok ok here and now if i come to the prompt here you see that all of my compilers are working they're not doing anything because there's no input files on them the same thing if you click on the windows uh, symbol here you go to the PowerShell, which is another shell or, or command or terminal for in Windows. You can call the you can call the the compilers for from here. So the compilers are not are, are now all installed. Now you need to do is test them. Let's close this here. Go to C here. Let's create a new folder here. New folder code. Just call it code for simplicity. So I'm gonna go here to the command prompt one more time and uh, I'm gonna navigate to that folder. And now all you want to do is to save your your programs here and you're gonna execute them from here so again let's go to your this file here let's create we're not going to use any fancy uh, programming environments or none of that let's just call the notepad and we're going to write our code here let's write a simple C comma C program do the, the traditional Forward. So let's put include. This is the standard libraries which you need that you need to to run your files here, e or other programming language. So we start your program with Ewint main. Just giving an example. This is not a coding tutorial. Return zero. Let's put print here. It's going to be printed to the terminal. Hello world. world. Okay. Semicolon here. 
now you're gonna save this all you want to do is save this here let's call this hello.c so it's important that you save here this with this extension of the programming language that you're using for for your code okay so remember to save this if you're doing this the same the first time remember to just put this as all files otherwise windows is going to save it as txt okay okay save so this is your code now we need to compile and execute our code let's say we want to execute our code in c so i'm going to call the c compiler the input file is hello dot in the output file let's call it hello could be hello.exe let's call hello run now we're going to check the file to see the file is there so the file hello.exe was created in windows it automatically creates an executable file but that's not true necessarily in linux and other distributions so let's run the file here to run you put dot slash and the name of the file hello dot exe oops let's try to the, the the slash is very depending if you're using windows or linux so hello world so we compiled do this one more time clear here we compile our code with this command and then we ran our code with this command okay so the same thing for any other language let's say now that you we want you to create a file for c plus plus so we're gonna include stream the necessary libraries all the rest is similar to C. Return zero. We're gonna using namespace std. So we don't need to be writing std before any command. So the out this prints to the terminal. Hello. Plus plus put in line here for good measure. Okay, now you're gonna do the same thing. You save this as all types of files, and we're gonna call this hello cpp. Okay, now you're gonna run the same type, the same, not the same, but it's very similar here. You're gonna call your C compiler. Your file that you're gonna run is hello.cpp and the out is hello. It, it will create the exe automatically. So if we didn't do anything wrong with the file, there's no be there's gonna not gonna be any error messages here. Okay, so now the same thing run your file uh, it's it's better that we call it reload too because we already have an executable file named hello there so now let's call hello hello.exe hello c++ if you do something wrong with your code let's put something random here let's save Run it again, the error messages are gonna appear here. Compiler. So mean GW has already those messages. Okay. So let's do the same thing for Fortran. I'm gonna save this as hello.f95. It could be f, it could be for four. Uh, there are several editions of Fortran. Let's compile it on modern modern Fortran. Fortran 95. There's been revisions. Let's just do it in Fortran 95. Okay. So what you need to do here is program 
hello and program hello let's put here right hello fortran okay that's pretty much it for fortran save it here let's compile our code here our fortran code the compiler name is gfortran the same thing that the same thing as the uh, others hello dot f 95 except for the file extensions output let's call it hello f run it if we save that hair that in the wrong place save as hello dot f 5 oh it's i i did that mistake that i told you not to do it but all files here save So the problem here is that Windows locks the file extensions in most cases so you can't see the file extensions or you can't ch you can't change the file extensions. This is because for regular users changing the file extensions can lock your files outside your programs. And that can give you a lot of problems if you don't know what you're doing. So to be able to change this extension here, the, the true extension here, it's txt, like you said, if I open this here and I try to save as, even telling them that it's all types of files, it still saves as a txt. So because Windows is pretty limited, if you, if you know what you're doing, Windows is pretty limited and you have to change a lot of the configurations. So what we need to do is what we we need to change the configuration so it shows the file ex extension. So let's just search here file extensions. Show file extensions. Let's open this here. So it, it will take you for the configurations for for the file or for the developers. It should be standard for anyone who wants to see the extensions not only for the, the developers but anyway files and folders uh, hide extensions we don't want to hide the extensions okay here apply so now you can see that the true extension of this file is txt we don't want an a txt example delete this here so now we have an f95 file which is a fortran file so let's compile our, our our file again now it's compiled without problems and let's run hello f okay so hello fortran that's it